you guys a little bit about my clinic um, story. So, um, for Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week, today is the last day, December 7th. Um, I wanted to talk to you about my journey and what has happened with me over the past six, seven years that I've been diagnosed. So, um, I was diagnosed with Crohn's in 2014. Um, I was diagnosed about three days after my 25th birthday. I'm now 31. Um, so what happened was, um, I went out for Halloween with my friends. Um, the usual, you know, bar hopping, love my liquor, had a good time, had a party at my friend's house. Um, that night was pretty hectic for me, um, after... I got drunk, um, and I had trouble sleeping, my stomach was hurting really bad, I kept going to the bathroom, like I had to throw up, now I'm not one to throw up from liquor, I'm one to hold my liquor, because it, number one is expensive, and number two, I just loved, I loved to drink, um, because I had my son at 18, my first year of college, my first semester, actually, I got pregnant with him, and I never had that party stage. I never got that. So by the time he was five, six, seven years old, um, you know, he was able to be at my mom's and I was graduated college. I was working full time um, and he was bigger and I felt more comfortable, you know, leaving him with my mom or my grandmother. Well, I went out and lived my life, which they completely understand. They completely let me get what I needed to get out of my system for a few years. Um, you know, I still went to work every day. I still was a full-time single mom. Um, but on the weekends, sometimes a weekday or a, you know, a Sunday night, I'm drinking. Um, so it was kind of unusual because days leading up to that party, um, I had taken, well, I had been out, you know, to one of my favorite bars and you know, I did my shots and I had my normal drinks and I threw up. I was like, girl, why are you throwing up? And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, that's weird. And I was like, I know. And then I was like, oh, my stomach hurt and I'm so nauseous. I'm like, I know. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to use the bathroom. And I was like, what is going on with me? And I'm like, I don't know. It must be some, maybe I ate some bad chicken wings or something. Um, so, had the party. Stayed the night, had some issues with my stomach, had issues uh, keeping everything down. Um, so the next couple of days, I sat at home. I was really, really having a hard time. At that point, I was even keeping water down, and I literally felt like I was dying. Um, I had to call off work, which I never, never, ever, like hardly ever would call off work at that point. Because I needed the money. I lived on my own. I paid for my own car. paid for my own apartment. paid for everything for my son. You know, just doing the damn thing. Rocking it. You know what I mean? So, it was fairly odd for me at the time. And I was a certified medical assistant for four gastroenterologists here in my town. Ironic. Maybe. Um, so, once I started throwing up water, I said... I'm dying. I'm not going to get to the hospital by ambulance because I'm going to die on route. So where I lived at the time, there was an ER literally probably two minutes from my apartment. So I said, I'm going to drive myself. I'm going to go and see what's going on. So I went to this hospital. It was It's a private hospital. Um, so it's really, it's smaller. It's more like intimate. It's more... Um, I don't know, less busy and, you know, easier to get seen there, really, uh, compared to the other, like, level one tra trauma centers in our area. Um, so I went there, uh, again, huge amount of pain, throwing up, body was hurting, I had the shivers from the pain was so bad, um, and it literally felt like my stomach was, like, doing like this, and I was, like, getting stabbed in my stomach over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and it would not stop um so i finally had my blood work done 
They gave me some hand meds, said they were gonna run some tests. They gave me the fluid for CAT scan. Had the CAT scan, uh, or no, had the fluid for the CAT scan, threw that up. One, they wanted me to get some more liquids in me because I was completely dry, just completely dehydrated from just the throwing up and pooping that I was doing for days um, before I had actually went. And um, what is weird was, like I said, the weeks leading up to my diagnosis, like I noticed I was 110 pounds, I was really little. Um, I was nauseous at the time, never really threw up though. Um, but I had diarrhea a lot, so I was taking Imodium, like, it was Tic Tacs, like, I was taking Imodium so much because I kept having diarrhea, and I'm like, why is this happening? And this went on for probably a couple years where I just completely ignored the signs, and, which I worked for GI, I dealt with patients every day with Crohn's disease, and it never clicked for me. Um, I was so thin. In fact, you could see my collarbone. You could see my ribs. Wasn't putting on weight. Weight wasn't staying in. Everything was coming out. And my family actually thought that I had a problem, like a drug problem. And, um, you know, addiction runs my family. And I was like, no, like I've never tried hardcore drugs because I know that my family is a family that has addiction issues. So, I never really tried hardcore drugs. Like, I'm not one. Like, I just smoked weed. Never tried a hardcore drug. Still haven't to this day. Never tried anything. So, I get, when I'm in the hospital, I get these tests run. So, I got this glitter on my face. I've been doing the tree today. And um, I've been up all night because I haven't been feeling well for the past couple of days again. Um, Crohn's thing. So, I'm just, I'm just powering through at this point. It's homeschool Monday. So, um, I'm there for maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Um, I get the CAT scan. Doctors come in and they say, um, your ileum looks really inflamed. And we think you have Crohn's disease because it's literally almost completely shut. Like, there's nothing passing. Um, so this is an emergency. You need to be admitted. We need to get you started on medications. We need to get you scheduled for a colonoscopy just to make sure your biopsy results confirm what we think this is. But this is why you haven't been able to gain weight. This is why you're throwing up. Um, the Imodium actually triggers Crohn's. It actually triggers, it triggers the um, digestive system to fight back the urges to not flush everything out. So basically Crohn's is this. Okay, so it's an autoimmune, there is no cure. Um, so what it does is my white blood cells attack my colon, stomach, digestive tract. So Crohn's can go from your mouth to your anus, up to down, the whole entire thing can become completely obliterated by disease and inflammation so the white blood cells are sending these out like this doesn't belong here we need to get this out of here this doesn't fit in here it's making us mad like we need to get rid of it get rid of it get rid of it get rid of it but it's like no 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 it's your intestines it's your stomach it's your digestive tract you need it and my body's like no 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 this is wrong we need to send inflammation here and stop it it's, it's, it's bad, it's an infection, it's this and that, and your body tries to get rid of it. And it's, it's this constant battle of um, having this inflammation just constantly ravage your body from your mouth to your butt. Um, and Crohn's can be in any part of that digestive tract. It can start from the bottom, work its way up. It can just stay in the local area. It can stay at one, you know, affect the anus, affect the colon, affect the small colon, affect the stomach, all of it. Um, so at that point, I was really scared because they were like really, really worried. I guess from the pictures, it looked really, really bad. Like it was bad. Like um, had I not gone, and waited maybe a couple more days because I was so dehydrated, I probably would have died. Um, because I really, I wasn't passing any stool. And everything was just backing up, backing up, backing up behind that stricture point. And that's why there was pain there because the white blood cells are sitting into the stricture. Like, 
you know, help it, help it, help it. Meanwhile, it's swelling, 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 swelling to the point that nothing's going down and nothing's coming out. So I had both ways. That's why I was throwing up. That's why I had diarrhea. So at that point, I had called my mom and grandmother and I was like, um, I'm in the hospital. It's an emergency. They think I have Crohn's disease. Um, I'm getting admitted. They say I'm going to have to stay here for a week or two. I need you guys to get Aaron from daycare after he gets out of school and come to this hospital. So naturally, being an only child, mom races out of work, um, picks up my grandmother, and they come to the hospital. So they come home. They come to the hospital to see me, and I am a mess. I am pale. I am sweaty clammy i am just so i'm in so much pain and they were giving me morphine 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 and it wasn't even touching they gave it i am they put put some right in my stomach through the tissue took forever to kick in for me um i was getting it in my iv they had to keep upping it upping it because it was not knocking the pain off i was in tears so at this point i had got admitted they were taking me up to my room so they say we're gonna put an ng tube down your nose we're going to connect it to this pump, and it's going to suck everything out, everything behind that blockage, into this container. You're not allowed to eat or drink anything, which you won't either. You won't want to anyway, and you can, which you haven't been doing um, while this is in because your food doesn't get absorbed. Obviously, that machine's going to suck everything out. So, um... That was probably the scariest thing I have ever been through. They don't put you to sleep, and I had never broken a bone. I have never had a surgery. I had stitches one time. So going from nothing to this caliber of medical intervention was completely crazy for me. I mean, when I had my baby, my baby, I had him eight hours, start to finish, water broke, went through the labor process, had an epidural, pushed him out in like three pushes, done not a hard process like they called it a textbook labor like i've never had any medical trauma to myself so this is crazy so i had to call my work obviously well my mom my mom did call told them what was going on um it was just really really rough um so they stick the tube down my nose here and they tell you drink water drink water they loop it up put it all the way down it goes all the way down your throat all the way into your belly and then they take a x-ray to make sure that it's positioned in the right spot so you can taste it behind your throat like you can feel this thick tube that they stuck down your nose behind your throat weirdest feeling ever and it hurts and it's annoying and it makes you want to gag the whole time i don't know why 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 it's disgusting so, um, after that, I, they did IV steroids on me. I had to, I ended up having a colonoscopy. Um, I was actually even still back up that I needed an enema after I drank the prep because I had that much stool backed up in me from, they don't even, they didn't even know how long, they didn't even know how I got by as long as I did at that point because it was, to the point of literally bursting out, I could have went septic and died with stool in my body. Not a good idea. So, did it, did the biopsies, and the biopsies came back. My um, pathology came back. Definitely Crohn's disease of the ileum. And it was really, 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 really crazy. Like, having Crohn's disease and being around patients that have had it, um... It was really shocking for me because that's all I did was work with people with digestive issues. Um, so I never really um, thought it would be me. It doesn't run in my family. Um, I'm the only one that has it. And I have it pretty bad. Um, so what happened next was I had to start living with this disease, so I was put on a few medications. I need to see that for and get the inflammation down, stay on steroids, tough it out. So I did that for two years. 
I toughed it out. I had probably a hundred hospital admissions within those two years. Um, just constantly having the same flare after flare after flare. Um, I was put on Humira. Humira worked for a little bit, then it got worse and worse. So Judgment Day came. <laughs> I call it Judgment Day. Came. Um, it was February. First, 2016, first or second. Um, I went into work that day, as usual. Wasn't feeling great, brought in my heating pad, took my meds. I worked, um, even though I felt like crap. I was in excruciating, excruciating pain. And I was still working, I worked about half a day. Um, my doctors, they didn't really say anything, but they were kind of like, she doesn't look very good. So my gastroenterologist is actually a gastroenterologist I work for. He was the chief of gastroenterology of one of the level one trauma centers we have here in my town. So he said, I told him, you know, after the half a day I worked, I said, nothing's working. I'm throwing up. Um, I think I need to get admitted. So he admitted me to the hospital he worked at. Uh, or no, he had to call the other hospital because the hospital that he worked at didn't take my insurance. It was our insurance through my work. You could only go to a certain hospital with that insurance. So I had to go to that hospital. Meanwhile, let me remind you, um, medicines cost me out of pocket. Insurance cost me out of pocket. And hospital stays, imaging, lab work. Everything was billed and I had a copay and or deductible to me and or bills. So it was an 80-20 plan. So 80% is covered by your insurance. The other 20 of whatever bills you get for medical for two years, 24 months is your responsibility. Single mom, living in an apartment, having my own bills. And now I have this medical thing that I have to deal with now. Um, that's not even remotely close to my budget. I was almost at a million dollars in the two years that I that I had to pay my insurance. There was no way. <laughs> it was impossible. Um, so I was stuck with a dilemma. The dilemma was continue working and continue to fall into debt and not be able to make these hospital payments pay these creditors off, um, be able, not be able to afford my medication, not be able to afford hospital stays, therefore I would deteriorate and die because I needed to work. Or I had to quit my job, not have any money coming in, try to apply for disability at now 27. Yeah, it was about 27, 26, 27 with a child in get Medicaid but not have any income <laughs> what do you choose what do you choose that's America for you guys where you have to choose life or miserable life that's that was my those were my only two choices that's it and people have it so twisted it's like <laughs> Once you know how insurance works when you work in medical and then you become the, on the other side of it, you become the patient, you really realize how fucked up America is with insurance and how they make people pay all this obscene amount of money just to live. And even if you're single and you make a certain amount, you barely make enough to make ends meet as it is, you still got to pay for your own health insurance and you still have to pay medical bills. True, true statement. And then if I quit my job and I get insurance from the state, I still have bills that I'm going to have to pay because I still have those medical bills left. You see what I mean? So it's like you have to make a decision. Do I go with this medication? Do I go with that medication? What's cheaper? What's covered in my prescription plan? Generic, out of pocket. How much is it going to cost me? All those questions. So judgment day came. I had set up to meet with a disability lawyer anyway. So I was going to leave work like an hour to two hours early. I ended up leaving earlier than that because I just felt like shit. And I knew something bad was happening inside of my body. Like I just knew. 
I knew, I knew it was happening to me. Um, as you could just feel it. It was different than every other admission, every other flare I had had. This was worse than the pain that I had when I was diagnosed. That's how I knew it was really, really bad. So, um, I met with a disability lawyer because at that point I had already been denied disability twice already. So you had to be off of work for one year for disability to consider you disabled. And then it took me another year of applying and denying so that I had to get the lawyer and it was 18, 26 months until I could get a court hearing. So that's how I obtained the lawyer. So the lawyer's office was downtown. The hospital was about mm, 10 minutes from her office. So I got off work, um, went to my mom's, left my car there. Mom drove me. We went and talked to the lawyer, brought all my documents. I was not going to the hospital without getting that appointment because it was so necessary and it was so vital to my life and my parenting and my motherhood and my livelihood that I kept that appointment so I could get the ball rolling. You know, I've always been about taking care of my shit, getting my shit done, and then have fun. My kid comes first, then everything else comes second. Even though I'm sick, I still need to get my stuff together because I still need to figure out a way. How can I do this? Be chronically ill and be a single parent. How? You have to figure it out. So that day, go and get admitted. Same old drill, tubes. I had tubes coming out of my arms, tubes down the throat, imaging. You're completely, completely, completely closed. Nothing's moving in or out. It's to the point where you could go septic and die. We need to go in there and cut the bowel out. Excuse me, what? Again, never had a surgery, never broken a bone. We're going to have to physically go in there and see what's going on. See how advanced the disease is because the imaging only tells us so much. We have to go in there and see what's happening because the Humira obviously isn't working. You've been on prednisone for a year and a half you know on and off you've gained weight you've lost weight you know you're really sick okay um so i get in minute that day um it was a friday actually and um i had to talk to my mom about you know the pros and cons with the livelihood and he said if you don't have this operation you will die because we don't know how far in this digestive tract is diseased at this point You've been in and out of the hospital. I have all your records. You're going to see the other gastroenterologists that are in your building that come to this hospital. How the insurance works. I can't see my doctor because he had privileges at one hospital, but my insurance is covered at another. So our doctors, doctors I work for, went to one, the one, and then there was a group on the first floor that went to the hospital that I was admitted at, that where my insurance was was um accept it so you know he got on my records he was able to pull it up in the system since we shared the same system in the office so they were able to look it up anyway um so yeah um i had to talk to my mom have a serious come to jesus moment <laughs> and say i have to get the surgery because i have to be here for my son there's no <laughs> no question about it about it, I mean, it, it had to happen. So he said, we're gonna try laparoscopically, go in with the cameras, look around, pull it out, boom, bam, couple stair strips, you'll recover, it'll be great. Or it'll be so bad that I can't see anything with the, with the cameras, I'm gonna have to go in physically and cut you, um, look around, see how diseased you are, take it out and staple you up. You might wake up with a colostomy bag. You might wake up with a tube down your throat. You might wake up with a pick line. You might wake up with this and that. Because my veins just kept blowing and blowing and blowing. From Finnegan, from Zofran, from Dilaudid. From, um, just constantly, 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 constantly being used. Because it, I was in and out of the hospital for a year and a half. Um, going on two years. Um, so yeah, it was, it was an experience. So it ended up being four hours. <laughs> It was like an hour and a half surgery, ended up being four hours. 
Um, I did not respond well to the anesthesia. Um, I had a really hard time coming out of it. I actually scared my mom a little bit. Um, going back was kind of like surreal. It's like you go into this white room and it's all sterile and it's like, everybody's looking at you like you're the case and you're gonna get worked on and it was like really real like damn i'm about to get cut open and they put the mask over your face tell you to breathe count down like literally that's exactly what they do and so um i don't remember coming out of coming out of the anesthesia my mom says i was calling myself cora the nurses were trying to ask me what my name was i kept saying i was cora where's my mom my mom had to come back um, and I was still completely out of it, having a really hard time wanting to pull stuff out. Um, delirious. So they said, you know, it's going to take me a while to come out of it because it turned out to be worse than they thought. And had to cut me, um, open and take out part of my colon and part of my small bowel to my ileum. Um, so it was a very extensive surgery. Uh, so my appendix was removed, which I just found that out about a year and a half ago. And he didn't say anything about that, but apparently he had to remove my appendix as well um, because it was bad. And I also, it also showed that I had um, endometriosis. Uh, my bowel was adhered to my uterus, so as they biopsied, every all the tissues connected together. So that's how I found out I had endometriosis as well. And that started my 28-day stay in the hospital. Yes, I woke up with a tube down my nose. I woke up with staples down my stomach. I woke up with two lines in my arms. Um, extreme pain. And I learned my grandma was dying. And my, I asked my surgeon, you know, when I finally came to, maybe the next day, um, could I go? You know, my mom was going to do these services. We knew she was going to die soon. I just wanted to go say goodbye. Just let me go to the nursing home. Let me just go see her. Say goodbye. He said, if you leave here, you will die. If not from an infection, from something else. You you can't. You can't go. So, I had to deal with that. You know, I'm still dealing with that. Um, but she knew. And I, I got to talk to her. I think over speakerphone. Or my mom was telling her or something like that was going on but you know they had her comfortable um and i was <laughs> comfortable and that the lot it was a plus so well, day three i woke up in the middle of the night with excruciating pain excruciating pain worse than the pain of the first couple of days it's just sore you have these staples down your belly it's gross looking and have stuff coming out of it and it's just weird and you can't get to the bathroom and you have a catheter for your pee and it's just you're just so sick it's just gross you got stuff coming out from the tube that's down your nose so in the middle of the night i had to pull the tube out completely coughed it out and um turned out that i had a infection really bad at the bottom of my belly you had to remove, I believe it was three staples to let the hole just be open and drain. So I had a hole, literally, it was a hole. It was a hole in my stomach. Horrible. The worst. So here is my mom, the most, the strongest lady in the universe. She is, I don't know, Wonder Woman. She is ridiculously strong, and I have to get at least a quarter of her strength because she planned a funeral memorial service was grandma and mom to my son he was in school and see her possibly could be dying daughter and still keep her peace and sanity how something you'll have to ask her I don't think I could. Maybe I could. I did, kind of. You know, my son was in and out of surgery. He had a rough couple, two years of life. He was sick a lot, but um, we made it through. But it wasn't nearly compared to what she, that lady, is my best friend, my rock, my 
road dog my everything like who can do that but when you're thrusted into these situations you have no choice but to handle what's given to you so i got better got better got better got better got worse got better got better got better got better got worse got better got better got better to the point where I was finally released home, still had a hole, still had to pack it, still had to dress it every day. Bunch of pain meds, lost my job. I lost my job. It was either come back in six weeks. Uh, my surgeon said I cannot do anything after six to 12 weeks. If I do go back, it would have to be with mild to moderate activity, could not lift strain any of those things um and my boss told me no she said either you come back full time pay you two dollars more or you quit i quit i'm not gonna put my life in jeopardy for a job that i'm getting paid you know nickels and dimes for an education that i paid for and you're not gonna keep me so that started my process with going to the county to get on insurance on to cover my medications and my follow-up visits and brings me here to today current day 2020 i have not had another surgery i've had many hospitalizations since then from flares i now have it in my ilium and in my colon um, it has traveled. Uh, I have scoliosis. I have depression. I have anxiety. I have, I have a rare form of arthritis from what comes to be called anterior tricuspid arthritis, which I think I don't know. I think it's like five percent of people with Crohn's disease get this type of arthritis, so it's very painful. Um, but I'm still living. I take 15 medications a day. Still a stay-at-home mom. Um, I finally won my disability case after two years. Um, yeah, so I won that in 2018. And, uh, I spent the next two years trying to buy a home. I bought a home with my disability back pay. Um, I now own my beautiful house that I've lived in now for two years. And, uh, you know, just living the Crohn's life. So, I hope you all enjoyed my story time. I know it was kind of long, it's kind of long, kind of chopped up. I'm homeschooling. I have alarms going off for classwork and classes and timers and all that. And I'm exhausted from no sleep. Um, I'm getting my house decorated for Christmas the best I can because we're going to have Christmas at my house this year. Just fine. I'm an only child and it's just my mom and my grandma with COVID going on. I'm happy with that. That's fine. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Like, subscribe. Excuse me. That's Crohn's. That's it. That's a, Yep. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. And, um, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. I will try to answer them as best I can. Like I said, I do a lot of um, advocacy work. I do a lot of education. I do a lot of social media. I do a lot of um, telling my story, um, trying to be that advocate for other people, telling them how to be an advocate, and learning to love yourself with chronic illness, chronic pain, and visible illness and invisible invisible disabilities that's the hard part you look fine i look this gorgeous but inside my body is constantly fighting every day it's exhausting some days are better than others i've lost teeth and i've lost majority of my friends i have no friends really nobody calls nobody checks up nobody really Nobody really cares at this point. It's kind of like it's old now. You know what I mean? Like, we, you know, we cared in the beginning, but we don't care now. <laughs> so, it's really just me and my son and my mom and my grandma. You know, um, I just lost my other grandmother to COVID. 
Um, so I'm still grieving and getting over that. Uh, which I never will, but I'm not getting over it, but I'm trying to get through. I'm trying to push through. So, um, that's it for Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. I love you guys. Stay beautiful. Be kind. Strong, we're doing wrong, 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 but I'll try.